Good evening, or whenever you're listening to this, and thank you for enjoying the evening, the morning, the afternoon, what have you, with a six-pack, the Scotty Six-Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports at just six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six-Pack for latest updates in Wisconsin sports. You can listen to us wherever you f- listen to podcasts and find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty six pack while you're there hit the subscribe button hit the like button leave a review really helps the show today we are going to break down Milwaukee Bucks who released their schedule for the entire season late last week we had little tricklings we got the in-season tournament games we heard about who was playing on Christmas day we heard about the opening games of the NBA schedule but now we got it all all glorious 82 games of the NBA season And there's some big takeaways here. There are a couple of real tough stretches for Milwaukee throughout the season, quite frankly. And as always, with an aging roster, these these tough stretches become a little bit tougher when you you don't necessarily have youthful exuberance to you. Uh, when, When you have an aging Brooke Lopez, an aging Chris Middleton, Giannis year by year, who's getting a little bit older who carries a lot of load for this team. But let's, let's start with some big takeaways where we might see old friends again, where these difficult stretches might be and some real quirkiness around the in season tournament and back to backs for Milwaukee that I'm not sure anybody else is talking about yet. So let's, let's start at the beginning. How, how fitting Uh, Milwaukee starts the season with some real tests And they will open the season like we learned on October 23rd at Philadelphia. Um, And look, Milwaukee plays Philly four times this season, but not going to see Philly after October 23rd all the way until January 19th. So you're going to see Philly early, but then you're going to have to wait almost three full months to see the 76ers again, you're going to see a lot of the 76ers in the back half of the schedule this year after this first meeting in, in, in Philly. The The following game for the Bucks is the home opener against the Chicago Bulls on, on Friday, October 25th. And the Bulls also start on the road on the 23rd against New Orleans. They play at home on the 26th this being the first of two back-to-backs for the Bulls. So I wonder how the Bulls are going to handle this early back-to-back, who might and might not play in this one, if the Bulls are going to want to you know, make sure that they don't lose guys on the second half of back-to-back on, on their home opener for the year. That would be a little unfortunate for the fans in, in attendance at the United Center, but maybe maybe a little bit of a crowded house between Bucks fans and Chicago Bulls fans, as always, for uh, the Milwaukee Bucks home opener. Because depending on, you know, how Chicago handles its personnel, they might not see a full a full cohort uh, of their starting five in, in Chicago for the home opener. So I wonder if we maybe see a little bit more Chicago Bulls fans trying to get in the door for this Milwaukee Bucks home opener, make it a pseudo home opener for uh the chicago bulls as well right right after that the the bucks go back on the road they have a day off before they play uh in brooklyn uh and then they have a day off or then sorry they don't have a day off where they have to play on the road at boston on the second half of back to back and i'm going to complain about this a little bit later too just so you know um it's the second night of back to back early early test for Milwaukee at Boston Celtics have a rest advantage. Uh, They have a day off after they play at Detroit. So they're coming off a maybe not so difficult game at Detroit, get a day off. And then you host Milwaukee in an early season tilt, a game that they very well might have Eastern conference playoff seating implications later on in the year. Not, Super fun to see that that rest disadvantage early in the season. And, and speaking of these back to backs, speaking of the Detroit Pistons, what is with the way this schedule landed around 
back-to-backs and in-season tournament games for the Milwaukee Bucks. This really, really, really confuses me. Um, First of all, this is the night of the in-season tournament opener against Toronto for the Milwaukee Bucks is November 12th. You have that very next day. Uh, you have a game that I think you probably don't want to go to on the, on November 13th against Detroit. Detroit improved this off season. They're, they're probably going to be better just as that roster ages into NBA form matures, uh, but still not necessarily going to be a team up to the caliber of the Milwaukee Bucks. But this is the first of three games that Milwaukee plays on back-to-backs after in-season tournament games. So three of the Bucks' four in-season tournament pool play games are the first half of back-to-backs, which is just a weird scheduling quirk and one that I, I could not find replicated on another team's schedule. I didn't look at all 30 teams, but I looked at Boston. I looked at Philly. I looked at Cleveland. uh, I looked at Miami. I couldn't find any other team that had more than two games where the in-season tournament game was the first of a back-to-back. I don't like it. I don't like that we're going to make these games bigger with, with the NBA Cup and then make it even more difficult on the teams to handle that, that load, load management, roster management, rest management, whatever it is you want to call it, injury management, make it harder to do that around these NBA cup games by doing three of four of them on the first night of back to backs. The, the only one of the four games in group play that Milwaukee doesn't have on a back to back, which is, which is, this is this is nice. This is kind of interesting. Is Milwaukee's game with Miami, and Milwaukee's actually walking into that with a long rest over Thanksgiving break, because the NBA doesn't play any games on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, Milwaukee has three days off actually, leading into the in-season tournament game with Miami. Miami only getting one day off, just Thanksgiving Day off. So a really nice turn of events for the Milwaukee Bucks uh, against you know the thorn in their side of the Miami Heat. But while we're on the subject of complaining about some of these back-to-backs, which, by the way, Milwaukee plays 15 back-to-backs this year by, by my quick count. I believe it was 14 on the schedule last year. So increasing that, increasing that around the in-season tournament, don't really like it. Um, and then you get a game at Boston again on December 3rd. And I skipped over one of their game against Boston. Milwaukee is not going to see the Celtics after December 3rd, unless they meet each other in the in-season tournament in, in the quarter or semifinal. I can see Boston after December 3rd until potentially a playoff series in April, May. It's a really long time. It's a really really long time. And this game on December 3rd is the first game of a back-to-back for Boston who then hosts Memphis. So still kind of annoying because Milwaukee has to go to Boston the first time on the second night of a back-to-back. And then, oh, this is part of a back-to-back for Boston. At home for Boston again. And Boston doesn't have to travel for the next night of its back-to-back. They play at home. Meanwhile, early in the year, Milwaukee has to go from Brooklyn to Boston on a back-to-back. Kind of kind of annoying the way all that lines up. Um, fortunately, if you don't want to be up until midnight all the time watching the Milwaukee Bucks this season, you get a little bit lucky with fewer late-night tips for, for the home games. Of course, you're going to have these West Coast tips that you know, start late, start around 9 p.m. Central, but only one 8 p.m. tip at home. That's March 16th against Oklahoma City. Uh, And then weirdly, you have some other 
late tips against San Antonio and against Dallas in January and March. I, I think these are the... I think these are nationally televised games, and so I think that's why they have to slip into this late 8.30 window, this, this later game, uh, and that's that's why that happens. It's the same thing that Milwaukee had hosting the Clippers uh, a season ago, two seasons ago maybe. So not that bad. As for late, late tips on the West Coast, two 9.30 p.m. games in January 25th against the Clippers, um, and then March 18th against the Clippers as well. I think these are both the Clippers, but I'm also looking at my notes and seeing LAC thinking that's right. Um, hoping they're not LAL. No, the second one, March 18th is against the Lakers, uh, which by the way, the, that Clippers new arena into it, the Intuit dome didn't have a very great grand opening. <laughs> lots of, lots of complaints from people trying to get into there the other day, which I, I thought was uh, funny. People not being able to, uh, the escalator's not working, apps not working, Wi-Fi not working, just giant crowd instead of a line to get in. Very, 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 very messy. But I would like to get out there at some point in time. Um, then comes the rough part of the schedule. We mentioned that you know, January game against San Antonio on, on January 8th. But it's shortly after that where we go from a January homestand, uh, 14th to the 19th, Four game homestand beginning on January 14th for the Milwaukee Bucks. That translates into playing eight of 10 games on the road, including a stretch where you're playing seven of eight games on the road. That's hard. From, from January to 22nd to February 7th, by the way, you, you are playing an abs that absurd number of road games, um, eight of 10 on the road, and you're playing three back-to-backs. Fun. That's a lot, a lot of fun for the Milwaukee Bucks in this in this stretch where you're going at New Orleans and then you play Miami on a back-to-back -back at home. Then you go out west after a day off. You play the Clippers a day off. You play the Jazz. Then you play at Portland on a back-to-back. -back. Get a couple days off before you play at San Antonio. Come home with a day off to play the Grizzlies. And then you play at Oklahoma City on a back to back. It's it just keeps going. It's it's brutal. Um yeah, your your treat, by the way, for coming home after playing eight of ten and seven of eight on the road is that you come home for another back to back uh with Philadelphia and, and Golden State at the other end of it. Um, you know, at, at least that one, that one is you play. Sunday afternoon against Philly and then Monday evening against Golden State. So it's not a traditional back to back, but it's still not fun. It's not great. This is a brutal stretch through, you know, mid January until, uh, I mean, almost the middle of February. It's a really, really rough month on, on the schedule for the Milwaukee Bucks. So I'm going to you know, say it now. If things start to get hairy, then just hang on. Just hang on. It's a long season. You're trying to leg yourself out to get up to the all-star break because after that game against Gold State, you got to go on the road to play the Timberwolves. But then after that, you get to rest up for the all-star break, which is a real opportune time after a, a very, very, very difficult part of your schedule to finally get uh, some, some rest for, for your guys. Um, some other notes. Friends returning to Milwaukee this spring. Maybe look, I don't, I don't know if this is going to be LeBron's last season or not. I, th I think there's at this point in time, always a chance with his age. So if you want to see LeBron play and you want to see LeBron play in Milwaukee, uh, the Lakers come to town on March 13th. Keep an eye out for that one. Uh, and the Lakers have two days off before that game. So LeBron should be playing in that game. Barring, other injuries. This isn't a back-to-back -back for either team. Uh, this is a Lakers game sandwiched between games at uh, the Pacers and hosting the Pacers for, for the Bucks. But every, everyone should be full go. We should hopefully get the full complement of Anthony Davis and LeBron James and Giannis and Dame. We should hopefully see everybody in that game on, on March 13th, uh, which should be a lot of fun. 
We also have old friends returning Mike Budenholzer, now the head coach of the Phoenix Suns. We're going to see him on the road on March 24th, but then at Pfizer Forum on April 1st. I hope you get a warm reaction from the fans. I think you probably will. I know some coaches, some some fans didn't love his coaching style. He still brought you the franchise's first title in 50 years, you know, brought it to you or was along for the ride, however you want to decide it. I don't think there's real animus there. I I expect he will get a warm welcome from Milwaukee fans, especially because at this point it's it's been it'll, it'll have been almost two full seasons. Um so that should be nice. There there is a late West Coast road trip uh that that we should talk about as well. One one last thing for for the road uh for for Milwaukee where Milwaukee will have to play five road games from March 18th to March 26th. This time no back-to-backs. So that's actually kind of nice uh when when you go on the road. You're, it starts with this back-to-back. So you have that game at home against the Lakers, then you play the Pacers after a day off. You host Oklahoma City on a back-to-back which I think then is the second time you have to play Oklahoma city on a back-to-back fortunately, Western conference foe, but you know, not, not one that's anything to sneeze at. Uh, and then you go on the road to play the Lakers, the warriors, the Kings, the Suns, the nuggets, and then you come back home to play the Knicks, the tough stretch, a tough stretch at the end of March, five, five road games coming home to, to host the Knicks at the end of it all, all before your regular season finale, uh, on April 13th, when, the Milwaukee Bucks will host the Detroit Pistons. So those are your big takeaways from the Milwaukee Bucks schedule this year. I think it should be a fun season. I mean, that's that's a tough stretch in January, tough road game stretch to basically close the season, particularly with your roster being the age that it is, right? That That makes this definitely a little bit harder. Uh, I am trying to find something in here that I had as an additional note about this this schedule, but I don't know that I could find it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm real intrigued by the prospect of this Detroit game um, on the road earlier in the season. Let me see. What do I? I don't know that I have this somewhere. Um, yeah, there there is. Oh, I think it's so one of these games against Brooklyn. If if you have the the same kind of sports fandom that I do, one of these road games against Brooklyn, it is, I believe, Sunday, December 8th. Um, on the 8th of December, Milwaukee plays at Brooklyn. That's 2.30 Central PM. And then... It is the ninth. Yeah, the next day, the Blackhawks, the Chicago Blackhawks, play in Madison Square Garden against the New York Rangers. So if you're a Bucks Blackhawks fan, might be a nice little trip. And uh, Wisconsin plays Marquette that Saturday uh, as well. That's the Big Ten Football Championship Weekend Conference Championship Saturday. So big, big sports weekend. If if you can make something out of it, if you can make something out of, you know, going to Pfizer, and then you fly out. Or either late Saturday, because that game against Marquette for the Badgers will probably be an early afternoon game, so it doesn't conflict with the Big Ten title game. Fly out late Saturday from Milwaukee to get to New York, or you fly out early Sunday to get to New York, go to that Bucks game at 2.30 p.m., 3.30 local time, so that actually gives you a little bit of time. I know you lose the hour, but... Um, and then mm, Blackhawks Rangers... Monday night, not, not a bad, not a bad little trip. If, if you can make it, um, there was, there was another game that I was looking at where I think the Bucks play Detroit for their in-season tournament game. And then like the night before the Blackhawks play in Toronto, maybe, or, or in Montreal, um, which is a nice little jaunt that you can make um so yeah that's the big takeaways i have for the milwaukee bucks schedule i know i got a little bit rambly there at the end because i was trying to remember you know what my personal even even if it's not just takeaways from the bucks schedule things that 
I find interesting that I might want to do because of the way the Bucks schedule lines up. So that's my big takeaways there. Uh, we will be back with you tomorrow. I, I got to hop on um, another show later this evening, most likely. Uh, if you missed my appearance uh, yesterday, brunching it up with our good friend Bernie Bango uh, over on Big Cheese Sports, uh, you can go look up Big Cheese Sports uh, from IE Sports Radio on YouTube. Also find Big Cheese Sports um, on whatever place you are currently listening to this podcast. Uh, we broke down a lot of Wisconsin Badgers football, full uh, offense, defense, special teams previews, what we think about the makeup of the schedule, predicting where we think this team is going to end with, you know, some fun banter along the way. It was it was a very good show that that ran long, but runs long when you're you're having fun with with guys you really enjoy chopping it up with. So that's going to do it for me today on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Uh, come back tomorrow as we break down a little bit more Badger football, probably on, on this show here, trying to get to it before the regular season starts. Uh, we also got plenty of Packers content coming up for you all as well. Until we talk to you all again very soon, you can rate us, review us, subscribe us, on your podcast platform choice that includes Spotify or Apple podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts on the internet. You can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty six pack, where you can subscribe for free to see my face and see the face of other guests. You can find me, your host, Kedrick Stumbers at Kedrick Stumbers on the website, formerly known as Twitter and follow the podcast at Scotty six pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. We will talk to you all again very soon. <laughs>